Hey y'all, this is N4H&H, &H, and while this is a ham radio related, that's a ham up on the ladder. That's Joel, KC4WZB, and I'll tell you what we're doing here. We had a failure here of a couple of the speakers at the church, and uh, the other one's over there. It'll be next. There's a middle speaker too, but uh, it's okay right now. Uh, the issue is... For those of you who are audiophiles, the amps in this church were not powerful enough to drive the speakers to full output. The amps capable of about 425 per side. The speakers can handle 700. And those of you who are audiophiles will know what happens when you try to make up for that by, well, back there's the mixing console, by pushing too much into the input of the amp and you did what's called square wave and it manifests as distortion. And over time, it'll overheat the crossover board. There's a crossover in there because these cabinets are dual. You can see up there what Joel's working on. You've got a woofer on top and a horn on the bottom that handles mids and highs. So it's a two-way cabinet. And there's a crossover board in there, actually a couple of them that divide the sound where the lows go to the woofer and the mids and highs go to the horn. So they both failed same time. We think because of some, uh, there's Joel. Hello. Because of some square wave and, uh, well, that's one down. We're gonna run some tests before we put the cover back on. So one of the things we're going to be doing is installing a new amplifier. We have this QSC GXD8 that's capable of 800 watts per side. It's got a limiter circuit in it. So those of you who are familiar with the FTDX10, the FT710, FTDX101, you have a similar circuit in there called AMC, Automatic Mic Gain Control. It acts like a limiter. It's kind of a you shall not pass thing. And this amplifier has that capability. So for example, these speakers are rated for 700 watts. I can go into the DSP, this amp has DSP, I can go in there and tell it, do not allow beyond say 675 watts into the speaker and it will limit it there. Again, not unlike the AMC control in an amateur radio, like the ones from Yesu. And the AMC control on the radios is higher the number, the more, and it'll translate into watts. The higher the number, the more watts you'll get out of the radio. But you only wanna go high enough to get full power don't go any higher than that so you can see why I work in the audio world and there's a lot of crossover <laughs> pardon the pun since we're replacing crossover actually uh, we, we just repaired these crossovers the big resistors in there had uh, gotten smoked so anyway there you go we'll uh, we'll be testing this in a few minutes and uh, hopefully everything will be good. We're gonna install this amp to run the left and right speaker. We might get another to use for the middle speaker, but we do have an amp back there we can put in something called bridge mode. And it's the amp that was running the left and right speaker that was only capable of 425 watts per speaker. If you guys, anybody out there watching this happens to be into doing audio sound systems, whatever, maybe you run sound at your church, you don't wanna necessarily go, okay, my speaker can handle 700 watts then i'll get a 500 watt amp to be sure i can never hurt my speaker that seems like that's right but it's wrong because what will happen is inevitably you'll say oh i need a little more volume i need a little more volume and you'll hit it harder on the input of the amp which in this case is the output of a mixing console back there and that will actually cause the overdriving the distortion and you know the square waving so what you want to do is you want to get an amp that's more powerful. So in this case, an 800 watt per side, the speakers can handle 700. So that then will give us headroom. That's the way you want to do that. So we're going to take the old amp, which could deliver 425 per side. We're going to put it in something called bridge mode. We're going to use both amplifiers together. And uh, what do we say it could do 1400, I think. I think. So we won't run it near that limit, but that'll give us an amp to run the middle speaker with and we don't know, maybe down the road, we'll just get another one of these things. All right, just letting you in on a little bit of something, sort of, not exactly ham radio, but hey, two hams are doing it. <laughs> right, Joel? All right, we're gonna get back at it. By the way, there's one of the horns. 
that's from the other side. We have to go and install the new or the repaired uh, crossover and uh, and then put this back in. And this is a, there you go, see it, BNC speakers, horn, there you go, made in Italy. So uh, that's what we'll be putting in the other speaker when we put the new or repaired crossover in it. Doug, I found a secret weapon to help us. A secret weapon with yeah. this? Yeah, I, fa I finally found something we could use a bow fang. <laughs> there you go, guys, look at that, a bow fang. I needed a paperweight to throw something <laughs> So yeah, one of us is gonna be back there at the mixer and one of us is gonna be in there in the amp room powering everything up so yeah that's good joel <laughs> hey y'all joel's up there soldering hey joel we you know that saying right the bigger the blob the better the job <laughs> yeah for those of you who don't get into soldering very much let me zoom in joel is using a uh, 100 watt slash 140 watt pistol iron if you pull it into the second position it gives you extra 40 watts so it's 140 then now, why would you use that on a circuit board? Well, these are pretty big connectors that he's soldering to. They're not really connectors. They're little uh, blades that you solder to. And the rule of thumb is if you use a lighter iron, then you got to keep it on there longer to get it hot enough to melt the solder. So you're actually better off using a higher wattage iron so you can heat the solder quicker and be done with the job rather because that heat will permeate all throughout the board and you can actually cause damage. So just a little tip for you there as we repair these speakers. Hey, Y'all, let me just make sure you knew that was a joke. You don't want to do bigger the blob, the better the job. That was just a joke. Joel did a fine job on what that. Man, what? <laughs> I put a blob on it. He put a blob on it. So. We're hooking the horn back up. That's where we get the mids and highs on this speaker. Back with you in a minute. Joel's coming down, that one's done. We're gonna go to the other side. Thank you, Lord, for the help. Y'all don't try this at home. Joel is a trained professional. Yeah, we're over here on the left speaker now. He's soldering the uh, repaired crossover board in there. So the crossover board, if you're not familiar with speaker technology, we send the lower frequencies to that big 15 inch woofer that's right above Joel's head. There you go, you see it? And then the, uh, the crossover board filters, it's a high pass filter, so it'll only pass the higher frequencies over to the horn, which acts as a mid-range speaker and a tweeter. So that's where we get our mids and our highs out of that speaker. And if you're wondering why are they upside down, well, because higher frequencies are more directional, and we wanted to make sure that the higher frequencies are making it to the viewers, or in this case here in, that, in the room, listeners and viewers. And Because that speaker where Joel's working right now it's about 18 feet up. So we just want to make sure that the higher frequencies be, are able to make it down here to the floor where everybody's seated. 